Hello, I'm Davia Chambers. As we count down to 2016, we take a look at stories this year that excited us, inspired us, and had us in shock and awe. And from what we hear, they were some of your favorite stories too. We're also going to wow you a bit with the light show at the Botanical Gardens. We're here in Scarborough and it's really amazing to see. Let's begin now with a peek at what's in our review. The year began with talks about Tobago's self-governance. Tobago shined bright when newly elected Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley visited the island and a new tradition, celebrating you on Tobago Day. A look back at these stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Going to Barbados? Why continue to pay high prices when you can get there for only U.S. $231.95, all taxes included? Yes, you heard right. You can now travel to Barbados from Tobago for a mere U.S. $231.95 on Gold's weekly service. So if you're going to Barbados for business, the beach, crop over, or attending university, stop wasting your money on those other high-priced airlines and get there for a fraction of the cost. To book, just log on to www.vogel.com.br. Barbados just got closer. We're here at the Botanical Gardens. The lighting is a tradition that started in 2005 by Assemblyman Hilton Sandy. Now January is dry season and the year also began hot on the subject of self-governance for Tobago. It's been almost 40 years and Tobago's voice for autonomy has remained firm and gotten stronger and clearer. Have a look. Twelve sector meetings have been held, supported by four consultations. Now, the Secretariat for Tobago's Autonomy is taking the movement to another step. We have a meeting at the Penny Savers Car Park at Canaan Bonacord at 5 p.m. on Sunday, January 18th. That particular meeting will give an update as to how far we are in the process. Uh, as part of a nonpartisan secretariat, one of our major concerns is engaging the communities, whether it's the uh, different sectors of the community. Dr. Guy explains what that update entails and why it's so important for the Forum of Political Parties to communicate that to the public. There was a meeting with the Prime Minister, Mrs. Prasad Bissessa. And Mr. London, Mr. Charles, and Mr. Wilson, we seek to give the people an update as to what has happened. The primary engagement is that people should understand what um, Mrs. Prasad Bissessa said, what were some of the promises she made, what were some of the issues that came forth in the meeting. She's hoping that the majority of Tobago partakes in the discussion for internal self-government. But there's a special plea for one sector especially. I'm appealing to the youth to come out to support self-government. I would say back in 1979, I was a student at the time at Bishop's High School, and we were very much involved in seeing the process. Um, what happened in 1977, 1979, Mr. Robinson and the movement, and I think it is particularly interesting, it is particularly important for young people to get involved. Dr. Guy says the Secretariat will continue to do their research on self-government internationally, as the final step is for the bill to be taken to this country's parliament. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. The lighting ceremony at Christmas time is also replicated at the Louisdor Nurseries in the eastern part of the island. Next, we saw a new administration take over the government this year. After Tobago-born Dr. Keith Rowley was sworn in as Prime Minister, we reported on the jubilation people felt when he visited Tobago. Take a look. We feel proud and hopeful too. The red carpet rolled out. Yes, the holder of the highest political office in Trinidad and Tobago, who was born on this island, is today returning to his alma mater's Bishop's High School and Mason Hall Government Primary School. Here, the students got a chance to interact with the Prime Minister. And learn some valuable lessons. You see, nothing is free. If you don't have to pay for it, if you don't have to contribute, rest assured that somebody else is paying for it so that you don't have to pay for it. 
And I tell you this so that you can appreciate how fortunate we have been. I, like you in this place, many years ago, was given the opportunity to access free primary education. And it's that opportunity that comes your way that you have to grasp with both hands. At Bishop's High, he urged them to join in the conversation about Tobago's quest for self-governance because they too have a responsibility. As you claim that autonomy, you are automatically laying claim to greater responsibility. So when you get that autonomy, I expect that many of you in this room today would be destined to play some significant role. Words that did not fall on deaf ears. The students see they are now motivated. I remember when he said that, to remember that nothing you have, you have by right. I think that means that you need to continue trying to elevate yourself, don't ever stop, always continue reaching for the stars. Just being in the midst of, you know, such power and such achievement, you know, I feel absolutely motivated here today to achieve beyond what I thought initially. The lesson I would take away is that it doesn't matter what you want to become or the background in which you came from. Once you push yourself, you will achieve anything in which you want. And so it began. Dr. Rowley's first visit as Prime Minister to the institutions that helped mold him into who he is today. I am Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. The Botanical Gardens is a popular attraction and activity for tourists as well as those who live on the island. Now, coming in at story number three was one of our most unsettling events this year. Brown seaweed called sargasm covered some of our beaches and it impacted on the nearby communities. We made sure to keep you informed. It has taken over the island's beachfront. Seaweed can be spotted at Bell Garden, Canaan, Buku Reef, and Speyside. It's become a current occurrence, but more recently it's been washing ashore in massive amounts, enough to potentially damage Tobago's tourism-dependent economy and impact its residents. The TATA recognizes this, so they're putting their heads together with the other affected organizations to deal with the issue. We in the Tobago House of Assembly have taken the decision that that challenge is so daunting that we are treating it as an emergency, as a natural disaster. And therefore the same type of approach that we will use in treating with any natural disaster, that is the approach that we are going to be using going forward. And right off, they began removing and disposing the seaweed at two locations within Speyside. We'll be focusing on removing the sargassum seaweed from the beaches at Speyside and uh, disposing of them at two locations in the Speyside, in the Speyside area in a relatively responsible, responsible way. One of those locations is at is that, is that Murchison. The other area would be the, the Belmont Road area. The hotel and tourism industry on the island has been coping, although they've had complaints from guests over the presence and unpleasant smell of the seaweed. The association fears it might impact bookings, but its president remains optimistic. Because the, the accumulation of it has started to increase as we've gone along. So uh, this is why we're very pleased that we can now start moving forward with the THA's initiative. And because it's an emerging issue in the Caribbean, and there's a school of thought that it's linked to global warming, higher than normal temperatures and low winds, systems are being put in place for a long-term solution. Since the 1980s, there would have been um, some farmers, not only in Tobago, but in some of the other islands, who have been um, using the sargassum seaweed for agricultural, agricultural purposes. And this has great demonstration value, but it has not happened on a scale that is large enough that would um, allow us to really make a significant dent into the problem that we are actually experiencing today. So we will want to focus some of our energies in, the, in terms of research, in terms of invest, investing in research to see if we can upscale the demonstration value. For its part, the THA hopes that collaboration at both the regional and inter-island levels will help the Assembly tackle this problem and bring relief to all. 
I'm Anika Springer for Let's Talk Tobago. We're recapping a special day in December when we return from these messages. See you right after the break. Hey, why don't you step into the Scarborough Library facility? It has all the knowledge of our land, people and heritage that you just won't find online. The Scarborough Library facility is now open. Tobago Library Services. Information inspires innovation. Welcome back. I'm Davia Chambers and we're at the Botanical Gardens this week. So many worked together to correlate the light up of the gardens with the Tobago Day celebrations. Tobago Day was the first of its kind. It was a day to mark the development, history and culture of the island and like the theme said, the journey continues. Let's look at the significant day and some related activities. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in This is the start of the first ever Tobago Day, a Thanksgiving ceremony entitled Joyful, Joyful. Tobago Day replaces Assembly Day, which was held to commemorate the reinstitution of the Tobago House of Assembly and its contribution to Tobago's development over the past 35 years. The invitation for all Tobagonians to participate in the celebration of Tobago Day is in keeping with the Assembly's mission to get everyone involved in the continued sustainable development of the island. If you want to move the emphasis from the Tobago House of Assembly to Tobago, it really um, calls for uh, a different thinking in terms of the way people see the, um, the, the, the governance of Tobago and recognize that um, as, as ordinary citizens, we participate and we, we basically are the government of Tobago. And it is not about the 12 members that we elect only. It's about the, the whole population of Tobago becoming involved in the governance of Tobago and in moving Tobago forward. The celebrations are taking place under the theme, The Journey Continues. At the two-day exhibition, people shared their views on the significance of having a celebration with an all-inclusive and a patriotic focus. I think it's a wonderful idea because it reminds us of where we were, what we used to be, and it tells us that we can again become, you know, just what we used to be then. That loving, caring, supportive people that made Tobagonians what they were. From where I sit, I think it's, it's, it's very important that at some point of the year that Tobago celebrates some of the achievements of Tobago. Um, and I think in doing that, it will embrace many more persons from the geography, from the political landscape, uh, from the social landscape, from the religious landscape. I think it's a nice opportunity for everybody to come together. Besides the two-day exhibition, other activities included a youth debate at the Assembly Chamber, the Chief Secretary's awards ceremony, and tree lighting ceremonies at Scarborough's Botanic Station and at the Louisdor Nursery. I'm Omidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The Botanical Gardens, all pretty with lights, spreads Christmas cheer to everyone. If you haven't seen it in person, you should really get here during the holiday season. It's one of the largest lit spaces in the country. Next, we've had many feel-good stories and we picked this one because it stood out. It was a happy time and one of thanks for residents on the Adelphi estate who finally received titles to their land. This is the home of Angela Pear, now 60 years old. Miss Pear says she lived on the Adelphi estate in Mason Hall with her mother since she was a baby. Now with children of her own, she's pleased to have finally received legal documents to her property from the Tobago House of Assembly. The talking was they was gonna sell the property, the whole property. So everybody I was thinking uh, where we will go after, you know, the sell the property and how much they'll be selling it for, you know, all these things until the house of assembly land and settlement would step in and was a different turnaround in our lives that everybody proud about. I proud, yeah, I'm proud about it. Going going nowhere else. Another lease recipient in this batch is architectural technologist Nigel Allen. 
he lived at the Delphi estate with his parents when he was a child. In collecting the lease on his family's behalf, he says that he understands the importance of land ownership in Tobago. They will be happy because it's something that, you know, to at least own a piece of property, it's a dream because buying a property on your own now is a really a big challenge. And this whole venture, you know, is something that we really appreciate. And it's long in coming and we're grateful for it. Over the years, the THA has taken up the task of regularizing persons who squat or rent on several parcels of state-owned lands with 99-year leases, legal documents which have benefits. Previously, you may not have been able to go to the bank to get a mortgage, but with this lease, you can. You can actually go, you can get a mortgage, you can use it as collateral. You can even sell the lease, but as they say, we will not advise you to do that. This lease distribution ceremony was the first for the year. To date, over 120 people have received their leases. The Land Management Department continues to work on getting the remaining families their leases for a property some have lived on for over 50 years. I'm Omodara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The tree lighting at the Botanical Gardens unofficially marks the beginning of the Christmas season in Tobago. Support for businesses marks the ongoing development and growth of Tobago in its efforts to sustain itself. This next story highlights what the right funding did for two companies in Tobago. These drinks represent a beverage company with Tobagonian roots. It's a family-owned business that's in Trinidad, but it will be moving its operations to the Cove Eco Industrial and Business Park soon. In addition to the move, the company will now be able to employ locals, cut production costs, and increase its revenue. How? It's a beneficiary of financing from the THA's Venture Capital Equity Fund Limited. We see how important it is, not only for ourselves and as a company born in Tobago, but also for Tobago itself. Another business that's getting financial assistance from the Venture Capital Equity Fund is Quiet River Corporation Limited, a woodwork company. As long as I have employees, that means that my production levels will be up. That means I could advertise more. That means I could deliver more timely basis. The venture capital strategy is one where the THA invests in the businesses and becomes a shareholder for a maximum of 10 years. In that time, the Assembly's representatives will participate in the management of the companies and provide other technical support. The THA will also get a percentage of the profits. We offer an opportunity where they can be supported by the Assembly so that they can move forward and create environment and development in Tobago. And this is in keeping as well with our um, comprehensive economic development plan. $25 million have been set aside for the THA's Venture Capital Equity Fund Limited investment in various enterprises. Currently, the committee is reviewing seven applications a strategy that will see greater diversification and strengthening of the island's economy. I'm Umudara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. When we return from these messages, it's your favorite footballers back with us again. We'll be right back. Hey, why don't you step into the Scarborough Library facility? It has all the knowledge of our land, people and heritage that you just won't find online. The Scarborough Library facility is now open. Tobago Library Services. Information inspires innovation. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Davia Chambers and the new year is fast approaching. It's time to let go of the things of the past and hit the reset button to start fresh for 2016. So let next year be your time to shine like a star in whatever you aspire to do. Earlier this year, we brought you stars, legends in fact, at yet another first for Tobago, the BA Tobago Legends Football Tournament. See if you remember this story.
Liverpool, winners of the first British Airways Tobago Legends Football Challenge, with Patrick Berger of the same team receiving the Player of the Tournament title. Theirs was a 3-1 win over the Caribbean All-Stars team. But the two-day tournament was more than just people coming out to see their favourite players from clubs such as Chelsea, Arsenal or Manchester United. It bring families together, it bring people in a situation to socialise and it also bring people to the island and I think that's what we need in Tobago to bring people to the island because you know tourism is our mainstay and I think when we have people traversing the island on a, on a, a, a quarterly basis it will do some, um, it will do well for us economically. Playing a six-a-side football tournament was not the only activity that these legends did while in Tobago. They tried their hand at golf for the Dwight York Golf Tournament, a charity event with proceeds going to the Dwight York Foundation. The football stars also passed on their knowledge of the game to children in eight communities around the island, something many people appreciated. We thought it was a really good opportunity to be able to support the youth, give them the opportunity to meet the legends and to help motivate them to move forward. The footballers went out and, and worked with the kids and the enthusiasm um, and that, you know, giving them the opportunity to know that this is achievable, they can aspire to great things and what it needs is professionalism, hard work and there is no substitute for that. The Division of Tourism and Transportation and the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport partnered with several corporate organizations to facilitate the football camps and the tournament. It's hoped that the events can be done again since they help develop the sporting tourism thrust on the island. I'm Umudara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The start of a new year can mean new goals, a new outlook, and you guessed it, those New Year's resolutions. What are your resolutions for 2016? Write and tell us at information at Now we tell you again the heartwarming story about a young athlete we admire. He participated in the Paralympic Games and won the bronze, Akeem Stewart. Tobago's Paralympic athlete, Akeem Stewart, returned home from the International Paralympic Committee Athletics World Championships in Qatar, having medaled. The athlete secured a third spot in the men's discus through F44 event and won the country's first medal in the championships. Stewart landed the implement at 59.13 meters. Americans Jeremy Campbell earned gold while David Blair got silver. This country is pleased with Akeem as he has been participating in the F44 class while he's categorized as F43. This means his opponent's impairment or physical challenge is less than his. Akeem Stewart is coached by Tobagonian Wade Franklin. Officials of the Department of Sport in the THA were on hand to congratulate the athlete on his return to the island. I am Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Our wish for you in this new year is that you don't only dream of all the endless possibilities, but you go out there and grasp each opportunity. Be sure to join us next week as we hear from the secretaries and assistant secretaries of the Tobago House of Assembly as they kick off the new year. Lastly, Tobago wins. The THA celebrates 35 years and in this story, student athletes celebrated 25 years of bringing home medals from the National Secondary School's Track and Field Championships. Here it is. Jump high, run fast or throw. That's what these Tobago athletes did at the National Secondary School's Track and Field Championships, bringing home 93 medals, proving that this island can run with the best. But this is quite normal for all budding athletes. Let me hear you say 25 years. 25 years. That is no easy feat. And out of 122 athletes who proudly represented Tobago, one stands out. 15-year-old Tyreek Hosford. He's participated in the event for the past four years. This year, he brought home two gold medals in the under-16 javelin and discus, along with silver in the 4 by 100 meters. Yes, I was confident because coming back from Carifta, winning the um, Carifta boys under-18 javelin, 
breaking record. It was I gave me a, a boost of confidence to going out in any games and participating and giving my best. These youngsters are honing their skills and building confidence. And 18-year-old Kimani Roberts demonstrates this. Kimani has been participating in the national event for the last six years. This year, she won silver and bronze medals in the over-18 categories of high jump, hurdles and relays. Since I'm accustomed to going down there, it was very easy. The um, interaction with our team was very good. I had a lot of fun, laughter, and we just went out there, did our best, stayed focused, and we were successful. Other notable athletes are double gold medalist Asha James, girls under 18 javelin and discus, Zakia Dinoon, girls over 18, 100 meters and 200 meters, Ayla Stanislaus, girls under 16, 100 meters and 200 meters, Anson Moses, boys under 16, 100 meters hurdles and high jump. And Safia John, girls under 16, 80 meters hurdles and high jump. It was one of the best group we had this year. And I'm saying that. They were well disciplined. And I must congratulate them for that. And also, I congratulate them as well for their determination and discipline that was displayed in Trinidad. The Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport continues to provide support for the students as they develop their athletic abilities. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. We're proud of the work we do, getting the story to you whether it's positive or alarming. We also appreciate all the things you've had to say. Now, for one last time this year, we want you to have your say. So tell us, what are your resolutions for 2016? Viewers at home, see if these next viewers are making the same resolutions as you. Health. Good health. That's what I would like. A closer walk with God. Good health and strength. And striving towards getting that home. I hope that everything will work out. Everything will work out very, very good for the new year. I hope that the government that the government do something good and things will work out very pleasant and nice. I hope that I live to see 2016. You know, and I wish everybody the best of everything. To finish school and to see a better Tobago and to do what I can to be to make that happen. Good life, good health, a better economy. That's all for us, but we will be back next year renewed and ready to bring you the latest and greatest stories of Tobago. In the meantime, visit our website, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Davia Chambers. On behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a happy and prosperous new year. Thank you.